72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Horcrux. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you again for tuning in. I appreciate all the love I've been getting here recently. I've been trying to make some YouTube shorts and just kind of doing a little bit of variety streaming. So thank you guys for actually coming into the streams, liking, subbing. Like 69% of you guys, haha, <laughs> 69 uh, percent of you guys are not currently subscribed, so if you can please do your boy Horcrux a favor, that's the best way to support the channel is just simply subscribe. No donations required. So with that aside, let's get right into it. So Mag DK fellas, everything has changed. I spent probably three hours on stream, uh, fiddling around with the champion system, and I was completely wrong with what I was doing. I play tested quite a lot. I play tested again today after work, and I think I had the DK where I want it, it's not 100% min max because I really don't have the resources to gold everything out and change the traits the way I want to, but I will give you guys the, the optimal setup, at least from my opinion. I'm only 800 CP, so the higher CP you go, the build will change a little bit. For example, if you're lower CP like I am 800, it's very important for you to have a higher health pool. See, when you're higher CP, it's much easier to get a higher health pool um, because this is a because this is a very bursty patch, very bursty. So ideally, you want to get your build to where if you're caught with your pants down, you won't get one tab by a spin to win Donny combo. If you can get your build to that point, everything else just kind of falls into place. And I think I've done that uh, pretty well here with this build. Um, so I'm gonna show you the character sheet. Hop right into it. It's gonna be a long video, guys. I usually try to keep them short and sweet, but I feel that this is not one of those moments to where it needs to be short and sweet. So I'm going to go in depth as I can. I may have timestamps of stuff somewhere. I don't know. We'll just kind of see how it plays out and how I feel editing. So, all right, character sheet. Here's everything completely unbuffed. Here's the back bar completely unbuffed and then fully buffed on the front bar. Uh, this actually goes up to 4,500 spell damage because I don't have uh, uh, popped the wrong pot actually, but it is what it is. So I popped a tripod instead of the pots we're actually using. So there's a front bar, back bar is looking as such. Got really high resistances, got 31k, and then physical resistance up to 27k. Our running double destro crit resistance is lower. The reason it's lower is because crit, unless you specifically build your build around crit everyone's just gonna have low crit chance this is just the way it is so i don't feel that you need a super high critical resist unless you're putting a tanky build and that's different so race dark elf ideally i don't think you need dark elf this patch you should go breton or high elf in my opinion um they did change the dark elf passive round to where you're not immune to the sass effect anymore instead you just get uh, a bigger bump to your fire resistance so ideally race wise either Breton or High Elf. Dark Elf is a close third, but I've always liked the Dumber class, and, you know, I am an elitist to a point, but I also like to have some individuality and uh, play what I like to play, not necessarily with the meta. So, running the lady, you need some resistances. I'm sorry, guys. You have to have thick dick resistances, or health pool, or both. Um, even... My health pool is sitting around 26k, that's because I'm 800 CP, but I would shoot for like 30k, to be honest. The burst in this patch is pretty crazy. You need to really be on your game for 1vx, and with a DK, your 1v1s, 1v2s are pretty pretty easy, but when you start getting to 3 and 4 people on mag DK, you just simply do not have the mobility, and the way your tankiness is this patch is really difficult to turn those fights around so the way i have my champion point system set up i'll show you the passives that this is more like a turn and burn type of strategy you you want to take a lot of incoming damage and pretty much every single thing in our cp tree is okay after you break cc now what so it's all about that that turnaround potential i'll i'll show you here so finish out the character sheet ring be with sugar skulls cheapest easiest to find all the stats that we need health recovery is pretty awesome this patch um our health recovery goes up to uh it goes up to 1600 but it actually goes up to 2k with our champion point passes as well as the magic recovery it goes up to 1700 
um, because of the passives that we're using and then on top of that you now can you continuous attack bolstering it even further so all these are well over 2k except the stamina rico which is still only at like 1500 but that's a lot on a mag dk and you really need it this patch because the changes to block mitigation and block cost unless you spec into it shit is very expensive so what are we running it's pretty basic, I'm not going to lie. Not a lot of sets to choose from. I should have said this at the beginning, that this is a serial build. It's not a no CP or IC build. So, first set we're running is Shackle Breaker. The reason we're running Shackle Breaker is because you can craft it to suit what your CP is. For example, since I am lower CP, I'm running more heavy pieces to get more health and more resistances. Because, for, quite frankly, you need it. The higher in the CP you go to, like, 1200 the more heavy armor pieces you can kind of get rid of and put in spec into more damage and more sustain but at the time of recording this video I'm running two light because I have to because one of the sets one medium and then four heavy so running shackle breaker running charge you can toss nerd hone on this bitch and have damn near 5k spell damage um, I'm running charge you're still hitting around 4500 um, this is simply just for the sustain and then uh, when you get up to like 900 CP, you actually have enough to get the passes that you need for the DK to further increase the status application effect. Um, I can make a whole separate video on that. I'm going to jump too in depth into that. So yeah, Shackle Breaker, this gives you pretty much everything you need. You need a lot of stamina this patch because, like I said, everything just costs abundantly more. So uh, back bar. Running Shackle Breaker, Defending, Absorb Magic Enchant. This is equivalent to like 200 magic recovery, give or take, as long as you keep the uptime. As you guys know, I really like the Ice Staff over the Sword and Board. For one, you can put Eldrian in your back bar, which I'll go over. And also, you can keep your weapon enchant proc up uh, damn near 100% of the time. So yeah, this is on our back bar. Next up, we're running just two stat pieces, pretty typical Swarm Mothers, and ideally, you'll want a dummy house heavy uh, shoulder piece um, I have a health enchantment on this because again I am low CP I'm trying to get up to that 30k threshold which I feel comfortable with so I left a health enchant on this um, I have in pin just because that's what I had but ideally you want sturdy and reinforced on your big pieces so if you can have a heavy helmet okay a medium shoulder heavy chest heavy legs, reinforce on the big pieces, and then sturdy on the small pieces. Optimally is what you want. So, uh, the other set we're running is Amberplasm. Love this set, my favorite set in the game. Luckily, I already had some of this. It gives us a little bit of crit, which is cool, spell damage, and gives us all the recoveries that Mag DK needs. This is pretty much the Shackle Plasm build. I took it from my Sorcerer, tossed it on my DK, been child testing it, absolutely love it. Um, having the really high stamina recovery does enable the DKs to do a lot of shenanigans that it just wasn't meant to do. You can actually turn this down really mobile class. Uh, Maxim Magica, try stats on the big pieces, and again, I have a health enchantment just because I am lower CP. Jewelry wise, I have one recovery, two spell damage. If you're struggling with sustain, uh, toss on a uh, cost reduction. If not, then just leave it as is. Okay, that does it for character and the sets that we're running. I think that's everything. It's pretty plain Jane. There's really not much more than that. Now, the skills are quite a bit different. Um, I've been It's a little bit different play style from what I, I typically run. So, obviously, I'm running Engulfing Flames. Increases overall damage by about 10%. Running Shattering Rocks instead. So, what I found while running this, there's not a lot of dot builds out there, but there are some and it's mostly bursty so you need to really high burst hills coag on the back bar everything unbuffed is 10k that's pretty crazy so shattering rocks the way it is now they don't necessarily have to attack you to give you the heal you just get healed from it so this is pretty much like a cauterize every time you cc someone so there's two or three people around you you just rock them rock them rock them then you get heals from all three um, it's really nice for keeping up your sustain pressure because what will happen is I'll drop down to like 75% health and I'll start freaking out right I'm like oh god you know what they 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 Donnie spindle with me I'm dead so this is a way to keep your health capped off as well as burning ember spam that's a really good way so you can keep up the pressure on your front bar next rank flames of oblivion this is actually our spammable we're using flames of oblivion as our spammable just to proc our seething fury 
um, for the molten whip. Um, the DK, the problems I ran into uh, on the PCS as well as the playtesting here the past few days is that you don't necessarily have a huge burst combo. Now I'll actually go over the combo I use in just a second. It's pretty easy. So Molten Whip really adds to that that little bit of oomph that you need to finish off the kills. Especially the Nightblades running around with all medium. They're super fucking quick. You need to get your damage out like quick. And just having damage over times and just some passive whipping just really doesn't do the trick. You need a big burst to kill a lot of people. Um, next is Ferocious Leap. Obviously Gap Closer. It'll give you a shield. Yada yada. Back bar running Ellie Drain. The reason running back bar Ellie Drain and on the front bar is to set up the burst combo. Now, I'll just kind of show you on the front bar. When you're initiating a fight, this is the optimal way to have this. Have your buffs up. If it's a ranged opponent, obviously have wings. We'll go over that in a second. But when you're running into the fight, you're going to want to lie attack Ellie Drain. Okay, lie attack Ellie Drain. Flames of Oblivion, so every 5 seconds you want to get this proc, so Ellie Drain, Flames of Oblivion, as you're running up to them it's really easy to hit Engulfing Flames because it's usually pretty predictable the first few moments of a fight, so you're going to Engulfing Flames, and then ideally you want to hurry up, animation cancel, do what you can to quickly get a Burning Embers off before they roll dodge or CC, if you get CC during the middle of this that's okay, but the idea is to have Ellie Drain up, have Flames of Oblivion, engulfing flames, burning embers, and at this time, this is when the second proc of Flames of Oblivion will go off. So, when you use Flames of Oblivion, you do not necessarily have to be in range for it to hit them. You want to use it to where the second tick from Flames of Oblivion is going to come through the exact same time as your Molten Whip. So, you use Flames of Oblivion, you know, light attack, engulfing, burning, and then right now, Flames of Oblivion procs as well as your Molten Whip. So that's a pretty huge uh, little mini burst combo. And then if you want to do the full combo, I'll just go ahead and... So you're going to do Ellie Drain, Light Attack, Flames of Oblivion, Light Attack, Engulfing Flames, Light Attack, Burning Embers, Light Attack, Leap, Flames of Oblivion goes off into the Molten Whip. Huge ass burst. It's very simple to pull off. It flows very well when you're initiating a fight and you can delete most people right from the start if they're not careful as long as you got your Eladrain, Flames, Engulfing, Ember, Leap or CC doesn't matter, Molten Whip, boom. That's all you have to do and that's pretty much the combo. So that's your your introductory combo. Now after that once you already have your dots applied this is why I use Flames of Oblivion as, as a spammable and not Engulfing Flames. A lot of people use Engulfing Flames but I always miss it. Like it's very difficult because I'm a controller and it is very difficult to actually hit engulfing flames. So engulfing costs 3600 and flames cost 2k. So that's like a 60% difference. So naturally I'm going to use my spammable you know, as flames of oblivion. And pretty much off cooldown if you can get your seething fury proc off just spam it out. Like It does a lot of damage and it's really hard to heal from to be honest. And of course you want to line that up with a CC combo from Shattering Rocks because the last thing you want to do is have them block your uh, Seething Fury stack, you know, times through your Molten Whip or they roll dodge it. And it gets pretty frustrating. So um, I'll finish going over the back bar. Coag, uh, a little pricey, do not, you can, you can spam this by all means, but you have to be really careful and not rely on this as a crutch. On the DK kit, you do have access to a lot of passive healing. Same with, uh, Shattering rocks, you know, burning embers, you know, whatnot. You don't necessarily have to use this all the time. Rain dragon fire scale because sorks hit hard as fuck. Sorks are pretty meta. Um, I pretty much just run this for the sorks, and then of course you have the gank blades who come in with the 20k spectral bows because it's a straight up uh, crit build, you know. So this really helps mitigate that. Volatile armor. Uh, some people run the other one. I just prefer this to uh, pull people out of stealth, to be honest. And then this is your flex spot on the back, race against time. I'm using the Alliance spell drop pots to give me the uh, spell, da um, spell damage buff as well as crit uh, chance on the back bar. So uh, you do need mo some mobility. Um, people are very fast this patch, you know, with the, the medium armor and passive. So I feel a race against time, you know, removes all snares and it allows you to reposition a lot more easily instead of roll dodging your way. 
Temporal Guard gives you a passive mitigation on the back bar. Um, you guys know this skill by now. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much how you play the class, guys. Like, you have your opener combo, and then you have your subsequent combos after that. Um, you're, ta you're more than tanky enough to survive the, the glass cannon bursts. Uh, my feel, you just gotta be careful with your blocking. Since you're running Ice Staff, you still get the blocking mitigation passes. I tried running a Resto. Block just costs way too much. Uh, you either have to run an Ice Staff or a Sword and Board. Uh, that's entirely up to you. But naturally, if you run Sword and Board, you gotta put Drain on your front bar, and then you're only left with two spammables on your front bar. You, know, you guys can play around with it the way you want, but this just makes sense to me. Now, going into the champion points, um, this is my opinion. I don't know if it's meta, not meta. This is my playstyle. This is what I think or how the DK should be played. So I referenced before the turn and burn method. So I think the best way to go over these champion trees is what four passes are we using? So the four passes I'm using, one is survival instincts. You're always afflicted by fucking status effects. So why not have your abilities cost 25% less? That's just my thinking on it. Other passive, peace of mind. So when you're immune to crowd control effects, you get 200 health and magic recovery. That's actually well considering you know, we have decently high recoveries anyway. You have hardened increased the duration of crowd control immunity at 15%, so you're adding effectively 15% more time to your crowd control abilities. And then last to kind of trifecta to top it off, we have Juggernaut. While under the effects of crowd control immunity, you take less damage. So when you get CC break free, you're immediately getting damage reduction, you're getting more sustain, and uh, it just lasts longer. So I feel that these three passives go very well hand in hand. And then with the fourth, uh, I just like survival instincts. There are other passives you could, uh, you know, branch into, but uh, where I'm super low CP, I feel that survival instincts is, is just really good. Um, Especially when you're 1vxing. Now 1v1 maybe not so much, but when you're 1vxing, you pretty much always have a status effect on you. So 25% cost reduction to everything is really nice. And then it's just a matter of tossing points elsewhere. If if, if you're a god tier player this game and you have like 1500 CP, I mean obviously just toss them in all your passes. So that does it for the red tree. Blue tree, I'll go over the four passes I'm using. Uh, let me reiterate, you do need this one at some point. A flawless ritual when you get enough CP for this. Um, I do not have enough at the time of recording this video, but this is the next thing you should be maxing after you max the four passes I have here. So we have deadly aim, increasing your single target. That's for your uh, for your molten whips, um, as well as flames of oblivion. And I believe leap, thaumaturge. This is for your dons, obviously for your engulfing flame and your burning embers, which can help with your healing. Uh, this one's debatable, um, but I still do like the uh, passive damage over time buff. Reduce damage taken by damage over time effects is the other passive, and then duelist rebuff, reduce it by single target. I mean, that pretty much covers mitigation wise. Like I say, if you have more points, you want to get over here to last stand. This is phenomenal on DK. If you have enough points for this, I would take out Enduring Resolve and use the last stand passive. Getting major heroism is very, very helpful for the DK. So when I get more CP, I'm definitely going to spec into last stand and just toss the rest of your points elsewhere, depending on what you have. Green tree really doesn't fucking matter. The only thing that matters is the war mount passive. As long as you have this, you're good to go. War mount and then just increase your mount speed. And if you have a lot of points, the only thing I can think of that's helpful in PvP is rationer. Especially if you use the really expensive potions, you can get these back, you know, 10% of the time, which is pretty nice. And last but not least, fellas, maybe ladies too, the, I'm just using the Alliance Spell Drought. Um, this gives us pretty much everything we need. Gives us the crit, gives us the uh, Major Intellect, and also gives us the, uh, the Major Sorcery. Uh, if you're in trouble, obviously, you really need to get out of a bad situation, uh, you could run Try stat potions. You always need essence of detection. And if you got the money, <laughs> you can use, uh, you know, like lingering health boss or whatever. But um, it's up to you guys. But uh, preferably, you know, I, I keep it cheap. I just go with the, the spell drought. So I think that does it for the build, guys. Sorry I don't have any gameplay. Everything I had was on the PTS. <laughs> I was actually running uh, Dampen 
like a maximum magica build like over 50k maximum magica and i don't feel like that's what you need to be doing this patch so i have like probably a half an hour worth of clips that uh really can't use that's it's unfortunate but uh, i will be live streaming this today tomorrow and very per periodically throughout the week so if you want to see this build live in action please sub to the channel and i don't normally do this i put it at the end of the video so if you guys met this far i really do appreciate it it really helps the uh, the average view of time on the videos and helps me get recommended to youtube but i do have a patreon i know i do not advertise it at all but ideally i would like to be able to do this full time and actually go all out and have insane build videos and have insane gameplay for you guys and not just eso but other games as well so if you want to take a look into that liking the videos is the best way to support the channel as well as subbing but if you want to go a step further and smith don't know something during a stream or even sub to my patreons i have all kinds of tiers between one dollars to fifty dollars you know just, just whatever extra money you guys have you know pocket change laying around just toss four cracks a dollar a month you know keeps me motivated it really means that you know my people who watch my videos actually care and it's just more out boost really but enough rambling hopefully you guys enjoyed the build video if there's any improvements let me know this is even horcrux like sub peace